Hello everyone, welcome to another Doctor Who deck tech. A little while back I did a video on which companions would work best for each Doctor, and one combo in particular kept sticking out to me as a fun pair to explore, so I present to you my version of the Ninth Doctor and Clara Oswald. The Ninth Doctor is a legendary creature Time Lord Doctor that costs one, a blue, and a red. It has haste. And whenever the ninth doctor becomes untapped during your untap step, you get an additional upkeep step after this step. Essentially, it doubles your upkeep steps at the beginning of your turn, and also if you have any untapped steps other times in the turn, which we'll talk about later. The other commander is Clara Oswald, which we can choose to be any color before the game starts, and it says if a triggered ability of a doctor you control triggers, that ability triggers an additional time, which means that we are going to, with the ninth doctor and Clara Oswald out, get three upkeep triggers every turn. I chose Clara to be green in this deck because I think there are a lot of really fun green upkeep triggers that I'd love to explore. This deck is mainly focusing on getting powerful upkeep triggers out there and happening multiple times, while the Ninth Doctor doubles them and Clara brings that up to three times being triggered every turn. Let's get started. Let's talk first about a vital part of the strategy with the Ninth Doctor. In order for its ability to work, it needs to untap during the untap steps, which means it needs to be tapped before that. You can always swing with it in combat, but sometimes you don't have a good option to swing at. So I've included a bunch of contingency plans that will let us tap down the Doctor and get those upkeep triggers doubled whenever we want. Honor Warren Shaku, Springleaf Drum, and Relic of Legends are all great mana rocks that will tap down our commander when we need to. There's not a lot of downside to including these in the deck, and it adds quite a lot of consistency. Paradise Mantle is another mana rock, technically, but it's an equipment that we attach to our commander to make it work. Again, it's inexpensive and very useful even if we don't have our commander out. The last one of our non-lands is Smuggler's Copter, which we can use its crew ability to tap down the Doctor at any time to make it a creature. This gives us a bit of card advantage too, which is a big help because it can block for us or it can swing through for us. Probably we're going to be swinging through because we don't want to lose this too fast. For our lands, we have Holdout Settlement and Survivor's Encampment. We want these as well because they will tap an untapped creature for us, and it'll help us with the fixing that we need for a three-color deck. Remember, with all of these, the key is that we want something that will tap down the Doctor before our next turn, even if we don't end up using the resources that the card will give us. Bonus, if it does give us resources that we can use, but the upkeep triggers should be reward enough for what we want to do in the deck. All right, let's jump right into our upkeep triggers. We're going to see a lot of them over the deck, but these are the ones that are some of the strongest and they didn't necessarily fit into some of the other categories. First, we have As Foretold. It will get bigger multiple times at the upkeep and then will allow us to cast one spell for free as long as it has a lower mana value than the counters on this card. It's useful to get out in the early game of almost any deck, but the double upkeep triggers make it a staple in the Ninth Doctor. Bio Waste Blob is an ooze that doesn't stop duplicating and gets bigger and bigger. If you have both Ninth and Clara out, your 1-1 one, one Bio Waste Blob is going to turn into 8-8-8 eight, eight, eight Bio Waste Blobs at your next upkeep, and it'll get even worse if your opponents don't deal with it. Dragon Master Outcast is a cheap and easy way to get a bunch of 5-5 five five dragons every upkeep consistently. Plargan Nasari and Stolen Strategy are going to get you a bunch of cards off the top of each of your opponent's decks that you can cast or play for free. Lots of great value that you'll be stealing from your opponents. Also, Plargan Nasari don't give the lands that were exiled back, meaning that you're going to have a lot of cards out of the deck very quickly with the right luck. Primordial Hydra doubles its counters every upkeep, which means you are going to very quickly get into a situation like the bio waste blobs, except this time it's just one creature, but it has trample. Replicating Ring is a crazy ramp piece in this deck, not taking very long at all before it makes eight additional mana rocks and then just keeps on amassing counters until it's removed. This is wild and I'm happy that this cool mana rock finally gets a home. Tamiyo's Journal works really well if you're going to have three upkeeps because it gets you three clues instantly and then you can search your library for any card by sacrificing those three clues that's a free tutor every turn that's just insane value dead giveaway to have this in the deck the other journal that we have is Venter's Journal, which isn't as good as Tamiya's, but it does grant you unlimited hand size, which is going to be important, and it's going to give you an insane amount of life gain every upkeep if you have a large hand. Lastly, Sphinx of the Second Sun and Paradox Haze are here to give us more upkeeps. 
Paradox Haze will just give us one extra, while the Sphinx will give us a whole extra beginning phase in our post-combat phase, which will untap the Doctor again and double our upkeep triggers again. That's amazingly powerful if we can get it out. Let's talk about some cloning effects, because if Bioways Blob wasn't enough, we've got some cards that are some more flexible cloners to maximize the effectiveness of our upkeep triggers. Extravagant Replication is one of the best cards in the deck, because it's going to let us copy a non-land permanent two or three times every turn. That's effectively going to double the number of upkeep triggers that card is giving, which is just insane. Progenitor Mimic is going to do much the same thing, but it can copy any creature, not just one that we control. It doesn't work on our commanders, because they're legendary, but it can once again provide some crazy additional copies of upkeep triggers. Other than that, we have Quantum Misalignment, Sakashima of a Thousand Faces, and Spark Double, and they're all here to copy our commander. This is just going to add to the number of upkeeps that we get, and we're probably going to be copying Clara instead of the Doctor because it is easier to untap just one Doctor and then have that trigger multiplied. Now, one of my favorite cycles in Magic is the Shrine Cycle, and I did have a lot of fondness for it before there was a dedicated commander for it. I built a deck around it, there was a great synergy there, and then it was almost too good, and now it, it doesn't feel like it's worth playing. But anyways, this deck provides a new home for some of those cards. So I've included the three that we can, Honden of Infinite Rage, Honden of Life's Web, and Honden of Seeing Winds. These are good even if only one of them is out, but even better if we can get multiple, as that's just going to multiply their effectiveness. Another deck I was theory crafting for a while was a deck that had all 10 enchantments with the court of something in their title. They all give the monarch and they all do something at the upkeep. It didn't really work out, but this deck feels like a great fit for those cards. So we've got Court of Bounty that can cheat out lands and creatures, Court of Cunning that provides a lot of mill, Court of Ire, which is going to do some insane damage if it keeps triggering multiple times, Court of Embereth, which is going to give us tokens and deal a bunch of damage as well, Court of Garenbrig, which pumps up our creatures to a crazy extent, and Court of Vantress, which is great at copying other enchantments if we are the monarch. We've got a couple of really strong draw synergies that rely on those extra upkeep triggers to be good, which is a common theme for our ramp pieces as well. First we have Inspiring Refrain, that's going to let us draw two cards every three turns, unless we have the Doctor and Clara out, which makes it every turn. The way those suspend triggers work is that every upkeep, you remove one of them, and then you can cast them if they've removed all of them. And so anything with suspend two or three is going to get out really quickly if we have the Ninth Doctor and Clara out. Similarly, Wheel of Fate only has to wait two turns to go off and wheel everyone rather than four. Kumena's Awakening and Staff of Nin are going to draw us a ton of cards at the upkeep if they're triggering multiple times. And last, Midnight Clock normally takes 12 turns to go off, but it's going to trigger much faster than that on an average of two turn cycles. Let's talk about the ramp next. We've got a wide selection of our standard mana rocks with Arcane Signet, Felwar Stone, Gruel Signet, Izzet Signet, Simic Signet, and Soul Ring. We've also got a couple of great mana dorks with Birds of Paradise, Delighted Halfling, as well as Sakura Tribe Elder that gives us the land fixing that we need. In addition, we've included Nature's Lore and three visits that help us with some consistency in the deck with getting us some extra forests. We also have a few pieces here that care specifically about the upkeep. There's Awakening Zone that's going to give us multiple tokens that we can sacrifice for mana at the beginning of the turn. Lotus Bloom, Mox Tantalite, and Soul Talisman will all enter the battlefield after only one turn cycle rather than three if we have our commanders out. I think these cards are often overlooked as a great early game piece for these medium power decks because even playing them on turn one or two still feels pretty good. I get that later on in the game that it's going to be harder to justify casting those spells, but I think they do really add some consistency to the deck if you draw into them. They're essentially another Soul Ring or an Arcane Signet or whatever you need them to be. We also have Lotus Blossom. This is going to get big really quickly because it adds counters as you go through your upkeeps, and then we can sacrifice it for a lot of mana at some point. Last, we have Rousing Refrain, which is going to trigger once a turn rather than every three turns if we have our commanders out, adding a crazy amount of mana to our mana pool at the beginning of each of our turns, essentially a Jeska's Will without the exiling. And so you can see a lot of these pieces don't see a lot of play because they are slower, like I was saying, 
but this deck makes them much more consistent and strong. And finally, we've got the rest of our lands. Now, I know that I often include shocks in these lists as well as the battle lands and they're not always the most budget friendly items really you can slot any land into that spot that produces the same colors and you're going to be fine so you should play to what you have and not spend a bunch of money on cards that only raise the consistency of the deck only a little the lands that i've included are breeding pool command tower evolving wilds exotic orchard Fabled Passage, Frontier Bivouac, Ketria Trium, Rejuvenating Springs, Reliquary Tower, Spire Garden, Steam Vents, Stomping Ground, Training Center, and then our basics are six forests, nine islands, and five mountains. This companionship brings this upkeep strategy to a head that hasn't really been seen in many other decks. It's not as degenerate as extra turns, and it powers up some upkeep triggers that would normally be weaker on their own because they have to wait for the beginning of the turn rather than triggering at the end, and they're just much more slow in general. I had a lot of fun crafting this deck, and I'm astonished at how many crazy strong green cards there are in this build. What do you guys think? Would you have picked a different color combo like with black or with white? I hope you've enjoyed this deck tech and be sure to watch out for the next one.